Welcome to the Generations Church Podcast. I'm Jeff Ludington. I'm here with Stephen Shaw. We are pastors at Generations Church. And this Advent season, churches, including our own, will be teaching through the Christmas story. And at Generations, we're taking less of a what happened approach and more of a why did it happen. And we're doing that by looking at the question, who is this? Asking, who is this child that is born in a manger 2,000 years ago? Who is this so weak and helpless is our theme song this year. It's written by a man named William Halsham Howe in the early 1800s. Um, And so this, it covers a lot of area biblically. Uh, It it asks the question from a human standpoint of who God is, who's this lowly little baby, and then gives the answer, a a divine answer, that he's actually God. We want to drive this point home, asking the question, who is this? Why he had to come, and then answering it with, he is God. He has done all this because he loves, he loves first, and it was his sacrifice alone that saves us. This is the most important question we can ask. Yeah. I, uh, I, I love this song. Uh, you picked it out. I had not heard it before. And so there's this question and answer back and forth. Who is this? And then it gives this answer. And so what we're doing... Um, If I'm being really honest, some of the answers are really deep into the suffering, crucifixion, death, resurrection part of Jesus. And uh, that part is necessary on Sundays. But in this Christmas season, uh, people are kind of prone to the manger scene. And so here's what we're doing. Uh, We're answering that question, who is this, both on Sundays and in podcasts. And so we're kind of setting up this back and forth. Uh, Some of the lyrics that we will use, we'll use in a podcast, and then some we're using as kind of a, uh, for us Sundays, and what we're doing is taking those lyrics and using them as a jumping off point into scripture. And so what verse, what lyrics today are kind of leading this episode? So this is the answer to a previous question. Tis our God, our glorious Savior, who above the starry sky is for us a place preparing where no tear can dim the eye. This is the verse that we're looking at in this podcast. The question is, from the previous verse, is who is this man of sorrows walking sadly life's hard way, hungry, weary, sighing, weeping over sin and Satan's sway? And what's that answer again? Tis our God, our glorious Savior, Savior, who above the starry sky is for us a place preparing where no tear can dim the eye. So that's really cool stuff here today that we get to talk about. And so let me just kind of just begin with a question. Stephen, when you hear this verse, those lyrics, where does it take you in scripture? Like when you hear it, when you sing it, or when you hear it sung, like what is it, kind of where does it take you in scripture? Well, that's one of the best parts about this song, and really any good worship song, is that it is straight from scripture. And so one of them is John 14, 1 through 7. I'm going to read the whole thing. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. This is Jesus talking, obviously. Uh, If it were not so, what I have told you, that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may also be. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you, ha- if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen me. He is the visible representation of God. Yeah. So good, man. That's one of the, one of the eight kind of profound I am statements that Jesus makes. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So let's, let's unpack this a little bit. Jesus says this. He says, in my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? So Jesus here is discussing a promise, something that he has been teaching his disciples. So this isn't the first time he said this, right? Where John 14, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the Gospel of John, uh, the first three years of Jesus' ministry, so from the birth all the way through three years into ministry, is the first like 11 chapters of John. And then the second half of John all focuses in on the final week of Jesus' life. And so John 14 we're in the final week of Jesus' life, that his teaching ministry is almost completed, right? Like he's, he's in the home stretch, right? And he's been discussing this promise to his disciples. And his promise is that eternity is in his hands. 
he is the savior. He is the very hope of humanity. Any connection from humanity to God is, must be, has to be through him, right? Oh, yeah. And heaven is his domain. Amen. Yeah, this is where I think pe most people get not only Jesus wrong, but heaven wrong. Everyone wants to go to heaven. No one's going to deny that, except they couldn't define heaven. Uh, hmm. Heaven isn't a place where we just get to kind of do what we want in pure bliss for eternity. No, heaven is being face to face with the one who made it all possible, Christ. We get to see him, we get to be with him, and that's what makes heaven heaven. And so if we don't want him here, why would we want to be with him forever? <laughs> yeah. I know there's, I'm going to, I know I'm going to take a beating for this, but uh, uh, there's a country song that says, I, I can't think of it, like, Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to go now, right? <laughs> like the, I, but there's such this disconnect, right? Mm -hmm. That heaven is something other, right? That it, it's not anything we're experiencing now, or it's disconnected from now. And I would say it is, and, and we'll get into this in, a, in just a minute, but it is very other. Don't get me wrong. There, it, it is different, right? Yeah. But the idea that it is separate from our worship of Jesus today is false, right? And so... Uh, Jesus goes on, he says this, he says, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. So I will come again. So Jesus in his earthly ministry is wrapping it up. He is headed to the cross. He will be crucified, died, buried, resurrect from the grave, teach again, reveal himself living, right, after the resurrection, living, ascend back to heaven, and then we, we enter into this phase that you and I live in, that the church lives in today of this this separation from the first coming of Christ to the return of Christ. And in theological terms, the Advent, that's what we call this season, Christmas Advent, talks about the first coming of Christ. The parousia is the second coming or the final return of Jesus. Now, without dipping into what happens between Jesus' ascension and his return, because there's lots of theories, lots of end times theologies that kind of bounce around that. But where Christianity all agrees is that there is a final return of Christ. There is a forever where Jesus reigns. And so is that where this song is kind of leaning into as well? I really believe it does. It, we're getting a really good picture of Jesus in the song, both the question of his, of his, in, his in his humanity and then the answer in his divinity. Mm. And I love these verses because we're also getting promises from Jesus, and Jesus is good on his promises always. Right. And so the fact that he is going to, to making a place for us, already already at work for this heavenly eternity with him, um, he, we know he's good for it. Uh, the last uh, answer to this verse is where no tear can dim the eye, and that always makes me think of uh, Revelations 21.4 where he says, I, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. Part of the answer in this verse is where no tear can dim the eye. It's such a picture of joy, peace, and love from our Savior looking towards uh, that day when we get to be face to face with him. Yeah, that, so when we hear that, ver so I hear that verse used a lot I, I'm, and I've used it that way. It's kind of that, hey, things may be hard now, right? Maybe you're sick now, maybe you're in pain now, maybe you just lost a loved one, but then, right? And it kind of pushes us off to eternity. And that's not wrong, but it reminds us of Jesus redeeming everything, right? That Jesus is the answer to all the problems, right? Yeah. To the, the corrupt, sinful, broken, painful world that we live in today. Yeah. Right, and so there is a sense of anticipation, but also kind of a, a foretaste now, right? We get to experience Jesus now. There's no disconnect between me following Jesus today and me following Jesus and being with Jesus forever. It gets better, right? It is, yeah, there's more that Jesus does. He reigns eternally, but it's not like, uh, you know, modern day version, you know, you go forward at a crusade or somebody hands you a track, you say a prayer, you get baptized maybe. And then that's your ticket into eternity. But between now and then you get to do whatever you want to, <laughs> right? This is yep. a, something that's inaugurated now. My life with Jesus starts now. It lives as long as I live. And then it, it reigns into eternity. And so in that idea, kind of, as you said, looking towards that day, right? As we anticipate that time where 
this transitions to that, where the broken world, where we still are in relationship with Jesus, where we're still in the gospel now, anticipates that place where we're fully immersed in Christ, where Christ reigns physically, where sin is removed and no tear can dim the eye. When we look toward that day, Thomas asked this question, right? He's in this moment, he's kind of asking the same questions we are. We're just 2,000 years later, right? And so he asked this question, well, how can we know the way? How do, how do we not get there? Like, you're going somewhere. How do we get there, right? Now, he hasn't fully put it all together. Jesus hasn't gone to the cross. He hasn't resurrected. That will answer a lot of questions for people. But he asks us, how do we know? The, how can we know the way? And Jesus answers me. He says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, right? I am the way. And, and we live in a world with, you know, relativism and, and pluralism, right? Where, you know, your truth be, be good for you, but it's not my truth. Or your way to God is not my way to God. Where, that as if there are many plural ways, right? Or that truth is relative and that you figure out your own truth. Live your truth. I, I hate that saying today. <laughs> Just for the record, live your truth. There's truth or there's not truth, right? And Jesus is saying, I am the way. I'm the only way, right? Islam doesn't work. Buddhism doesn't work. I'm the way. That's, he is making that claim. I am the truth. I'm not somebody's truth and somebody else has a different truth. I am the truth, right? And I am the life, right? These are one of those most profound statements Jesus makes. And he roots that in the fact that his life, death, and resurrection is the gospel. There's no gospel outside of that. Yeah, and well, he's not only preparing our rooms, he's preparing us mm, for good. him. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. But I can relate with, to, to Thomas here. I feel like there's, he's probably getting excited hear, hearing all this stuff from Christ, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. He's like, yeah, he's getting these glimpses of eternity. Um, and he's saying, but how? How do I get there? You know, he's jumping ahead a little bit too fast. Sure. Like, wait, how are we going to know the way? And it's by Christ alone. That's what Jesus is saying. It's by, I, I will come and get you, but I'm the only way to get there. <laughs> yeah. And I think that roots us in, in, in kind of, I guess, what I think is the point of this episode. Yes, we anticipate that eternal future, right? But it's not disconnected from today. Like, no. you and I... We're following Jesus today. And if you're listening right now, like the invitation is not to follow Jesus someday or to yeah. say a prayer that gets you to Jesus later. It's to walk with Jesus daily. And, and Thomas is asking that. Like, so how do we get there? And Jesus is like, me, I'm it, right? <laughs> like, I'm it now, I'm it then, I'm it, you know, in a thousand years, two thousand years, ten thousand years, whatever it takes. Stay close to me. <laughs> Stick around, right? Like, stay, yeah, stay, stay close to me, right? And so how do you get there? Right? Well, it's by me. Got it. Okay. So Jesus also makes this claim, and I, I say claim, meaning I believe it, and, and I believe you believe it, but he makes this statement, and it's a claim about himself. He says, if you had known me, you would know my father also. Mm. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Okay, you have seen him. By seeing me, Jesus says, you have seen God. Now, to our point this year at Christmas that we often have this manger scene, right, that is cute and it's a bit commercialized. It's a lot cleaner than the real deal was, right? It's, it's neat and tidy and cute and we all wanna, you know, we all wish we could have been there, but it wasn't all that. <laughs> and, and, it, and it points to a greater narrative, right? And it, and it points us to seeing God in Jesus. And, and God the Father, you don't get to see God in the baby Jesus in the manger, yep. right? You see God through Jesus, the full Jesus, the, the, the preaching ministry, the miraculous, the, the teaching, the living with, that just being able to see Jesus. He says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yeah. And now you have. You have seen God because you've seen me. To your point earlier, not just the human Jesus, right? The divine. You have seen God. Yeah, that's the point. Who is this? Answering this correctly, we are defining who God is in Christ. Mm. We are speaking of the only way to heaven. Who is this? This is the Savior of the world, the very image of God. Yeah. Yeah, you said something, I think it was in last week's episode, like if you get this wrong, you kind of <laughs> get everything wrong. Like if you miss who Jesus is, you miss the point, right? Yeah. You miss the gospel, you yeah. miss the point, and, and if you miss the gospel, and if you miss who Jesus is, you can't live it out well, yeah. right? Like if you miss Jesus, you miss everything, yep. right? So for us, 
Jesus is everything. I hope for you, Jesus is everything. Amen. If you're listening today and you're a follower of Jesus, it's all about getting Jesus right. It's not about doing <laughs> right things. It's not about not doing wrong things. Those flow out of getting Jesus right. Amen. And so we're in this series asking, who is this? Who is Jesus? Why? Why do we celebrate Christmas? Like, it's not just a cute story. It's pointing to the greater narrative of who Jesus is. Yep. That's what I like so much about this song is it doesn't just stay in the birth of Christ, though it is Christmassy. It does. In fact, on this coming Sunday, we're going to talk about the birth of Jesus. The, in fact, I'll, I'll read the, the verse that we're going to focus on or the lyric we're going to focus on that will take us to Scripture. Who is this so weak and helpless, child of a lowly Hebrew maid, rudely in a stable, sheltered, coldly in a manger laid? We're going to talk about that Christmas story, but we can't stop in this child. We, we can't. That's an incomplete <laughs> version of who Jesus is. So again, if you're listening and, and you're around the L.A. County, Orange County area, we would love to have you. Generations Family Church is in Cerritos. We're right on the border of those two counties. We meet at 10 a.m. We'd love to have you in person. You can also join us online. We live stream to Vimeo, Facebook, our website, our app. Uh, you can find us online pretty easily. What we're going to do is we're going to have this rhythm throughout December where we take one uh, part of this song on Tuesday podcast and another part of this song on Sunday messages, always rooting this in Scripture, always taking us back to Scripture, like you said earlier. Amen. It, all good worship songs, right? They're rooted, grounded in Scripture. And so for us, a Bible teaching church, we're always going to find where is this in Scripture. Yeah. And so if you've heard something you've liked today, Man, subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen, to, you know, to, to Spotify or Apple Podcasts or I don't know what you crazy people on Androids do, but wherever you listen to podcasts. <laughs> uh, and then join us on Sundays. Man, if there's something here that you think somebody else could use, pass that on. That's why we do this. We want to see this message of Jesus spread, right? That the Amen. truth of who Jesus is would spread. So from Stephen and I and Generations Church, God bless you. Have an amazing Christmas this year.